Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, let's dive into one of the biggest new capabilities in Power Builder 2025, automatically creating REST APIs from Power Builder by leveraging the data windows. With it, you can quickly expose the business data managed in your Power Builder apps to any modern front end, such as web, mobile, or other client application. Here is what we will cover. Firstly, a quick overview of Donet Data Store. Secondly, an introduction to the .NET Data Store project in Power Builder. Thirdly, the key benefits of using .NET Data Store. And finally, a live demo where we'll create, consume, and extend REST APIs. Let's get started. First, a quick overview. .NET Data Store is a collection of tools and libraries that lets you build standard c -sharp REST APIs using the familiar Power Builder data window technology. It exposes almost all the same properties, events, and methods that you're accustomed to from non-visual data windows and data stores. Crucially, it supports all data window styles, expressions, dynamic data windows, and explicit transactions, including auto-commit settings. Plus, it fully conforms to modern c -sharp standards, offering both synchronous and asynchronous programming paradigms. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison. At the top, you see a familiar Power Builder data window script retrieving data using setTrans object and retrieve. Below it, the equivalent operation using the .NET data store in c -sharp. We create a data store object, assign the data window name, in this case, dOrderCustomer, and call retrieve. As you can see, it's very similar. The context parameter here handles the transaction management, much like set trans object in Power Builder. This design ensures that Power Builder developers can quickly adapt to the .NET environment without a steep learning curve. Now, let's talk about the new .NET data store project type in PB2025. This project takes your existing data windows and converts them into c -sharp model classes. Then, it automatically scaffolds a complete ASP.NET Core Web API, including models, services, and controllers that support full CRUD operations. And it doesn't stop there. You can easily set up robust security with JWT, AWS Cognito, or Microsoft Entra. With just a few clicks, you'll have a secure and production-ready web API. So why leverage the .NET Data Store in your application development? It automatically generates REST APIs for your CRUD operations, cutting development effort and time. These APIs are front-end agnostic, ready to work with Power Builder or any modern client like Angular, React, or Vue. They provide seamless integration with Power Builder through the REST client object all built on a standard ASP Donut Core architecture deployable on Windows, Linux, Docker, or the cloud. And best of all, the code is easy to maintain and extend while preserving the familiar data window model your team already knows. Let's now put these concepts into practice. In this demo, we need to build an application that manages our company's employees and their order history the data will be reviewed among Power Builder app, mobile, and web apps. We can take our data windows and convert them into a REST web API that can be used by Power Builder and any other client like mobile or web apps. To do this, open the new window and in the project object tab, you'll find the .NET data store. Let's add it to our project. In the project section, we can configure the name, uh, location, target, and the URL the web API will listen on. We can leave everything else at its default. On the converter page, we need to configure the database connection to get the specific data types for each data window column, which is essential for generating the c -sharp model correctly. In the database profile selector, click Choose Connection and create a new database connection profile. In the scaffolding tab, we configure the parameters for generating the controllers and services of the web API. The main setting here is the template. This determines which endpoints the controller will expose. 
Choose PB Client if you only plan to use the web API with Power Builder's REST Client object. Use non-PB Client to generate a front-end agnostic REST API interface for any HTTP client. There is also the Any Client option, which generates both sets of endpoints. This is exactly what we want, so we'll select this option. Lastly, in the Security tab, we can configure the security paradigm for our web API. For now, we'll skip this step. With all the settings configured, we can click Generate Project to begin the web API creation process. And that's it. We've just generated a web API from our project's data windows with just a couple of clicks. The generated project exposes a basic CRUD API, which means it can create, read, update, and delete entries in the data store through REST calls, just like a regular data store in PowerScript. Now that we have successfully created a web API from our employee reports, we can make the data windows retrieve and update their data from the web API instead of making direct database requests. Open the demo main window objects function list, starting with the load employees function. First, we create a REST client instance. Then we use the new retrieve with model function with the data window and the web API's URL as arguments. Um, we can also wrap these statements in a try-catch block to ensure the REST client is destroyed correctly. Alternatively, you could have it reside at the instance level. Next, let's modify the update employee function. The process is very similar. We'll create a REST client instance. And this time, we'll call the update with model function. This function takes an additional Boolean parameter which tells the function to call accept text on the data window before committing the update. If data validation fails, the update will be canceled. Finally, the load employee report function, the approach has a few extra steps because we want to perform multiple retrieves and one update in a single operation. We need an instance of batch data objects to group them. Instead of performing the operation directly with the data windows and REST client, we add the retrieve update instructions to this batch data objects instance. For the update, we can also indicate if we want the data window to accept text before the update. Now, when we call REST clients retrieve or update with models, we pass the batch data objects instance, and that's it. All operations will be performed in a single transaction, meaning that if any of them fail, the entire thing will be rolled back and there will be no changes in the database. We now start the web API and run the application. And we will see that it behaves exactly the same, except now it's not connecting to the database server directly, making it more secure, scalable, and flexible than before. These web APIs aren't limited to Power Builder. By selecting any client in the .NET Data Store project, data windows can be accessed from any REST client, including mobile apps or other front ends. Choosing PB client only makes this more difficult. So keep this in mind when configuring your .NET data store projects. In this sample view web application, which we'll include in the project files, you can see that it also uses these web APIs we generated. Now that we have a web API with auto-generated CRUD endpoints for core services, it makes sense to centralize new business logic in the API layer so both desktop and mobile clients share the same rules. As requirements evolve, you can build on this foundation by extending the web API with additional features. The .NET Data Store was designed so its C-sharp syntax closely matches PowerBuilder's Data Store, letting you apply your existing data window knowledge with minimal learning curve to expand API functionality. In this scenario, we'll add an endpoint that lets any client update the tracking number for every item in a specific order, 
the client only needs to provide the order ID and the new tracking number. The workflow is validate that the order exists. Update each item's carrier tracking number and set its modified date. Commit the transaction or roll it back on error to maintain consistent logistics data. Assuming you already have a data window named D-Order Detail CTN for retrieving and updating order details, you simply convert it into a Dunnet Data Store using our existing Dunnet Data Store project. Deploying the project preserves any API enhancements we might have already made. We have created a new service to provide this operation named Order Service. Here, we'll perform the same operations as in PowerScript, just with a slightly different syntax. First, we begin the transaction explicitly by calling begin transaction on the data context, which is similar to the Power Builder transaction. We then create an instance of the data store. Here, we specify the data window object as a type argument when creating it, while also giving it the data context to use. We then call the retrieve function, just like in Power Builder, except here we're calling the async alternative. We then iterate over each row in the data store, update the columns with the set item method, and invoke the update async method. All this is wrapped inside a try catch block, after which we either roll back or commit the transaction. Let's compare this with the Power Builder code that performs this exact operation. As you can see, the logic and even the data store syntax are very similar and familiar. You can refer to the Donet Data Store API documentation for more details about other identical functions such as filter, sort, and more. Now with the service implemented, let's go to the program.cs file and configure it. You can now consume this service in any client. For example, back in Power Builder, we'll first retrieve the data window data using the same technique as in the previous demo. After the user selects an order ID and enters the new tracking number, we'll use a REST client instance to invoke the set tracking number endpoint, just as we did before. By doing this, we're not only improving our native application security, but also making it more flexible by allowing the same business logic to be consumed from multiple front ends, as long as they support making REST calls. For additional examples, such as raw SQL execution and dynamic data windows, see the source code provided with this video. And that's it for this presentation. The projects used for this demo can be found in this video's description. If you have any questions or suggestions on what you would like to see next, leave a comment. Thanks for watching.